Good morning, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, dogs and cats. Welcome to Professional Photography Tips. My name is Josh Cripps, and you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Joshua Cripps Photography. Today, I want to show you guys a really cool way you can increase color separation in your images and areas where you want to accentuate or highlight or differentiate certain colors. So let's dive right in. This is a photo that I took on a snow camping trip in Yosemite back in May of 2014. And uh, this photo has gone already through a fair bit of raw processing. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that uh, later. But this is the result of the photo after the raw processing is done. And you can see here in the foreground, this, these pillows of snow have some slightly lighter areas and some slightly darker areas. And what I'd like to do is you can barely, barely make out the fact that these lighter areas are reflecting more of this sort of purpley warm light and the shadowy areas are reflecting more of the blue light of the early morning and the sky. So if there's a cool way, an easy way that I can accentuate that difference, then I think it'll really help make those parts of the snow stand out. So it's actually super simple to do. And let me just delete this. Uh, I don't want to delete it. Who knows when you might need something later. We'll just make it invisible. All right, so first thing we need to do, uh, we're gonna be doing this whole technique just using a couple of curves adjustment layers. You'll see how amazingly easy this is. So first things first, grab a curves adjustment layer, pop it up. Now grab the little hand tool here, which is a targeted adjustment tool. First thing we wanna do is increase the tonal separation, the lights and darks between those brightish, brighter areas and the darker areas. So with the hand separated, you simply click and drag up on the areas you wanna make brighter, such as this pillow top here. Up, 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 up. And then you click and drag down on the areas that you want to make darker, such as the shadowy areas. Something like this. Okay, cool. Now you can see the tops of these pillows are already starting to stand out a little bit more from the shadows here in the background. Now, even though they're brighter and the shadows are darker, there isn't any color information being separated out here. So how do we do that? Very easy. Just add another curves adjustment layer. Now, instead of being in the RGB channel, we're going to think about the colors in our images and work in those channels. So for example, I said that the pillow tops here are reflecting a little more of the warmish reddish light from this crazy lenticular cloud. So instead of working in RGB, I'm actually gonna select my red channel and do the exact same thing. Grab my hand tool, click and drag the area where I want more reds to appear, right here, the pillow tops, and bring those up. And then I'm going to click and drag again in the area where I want to diminish the amount of visible red. Just like that. Now, I also maybe want to bring out a little less blue in this area. So I'm going to go to my blue channel, click and drag down on the pillow tops to reduce the amount of blue in them, and then click and drag up in the shadows to accentuate the blue there. Very, very cool. Very, very easy. You know what? Maybe, maybe I want to see a little more red in that pillow top. So I'm just gonna drag that up a little bit more, something like that. Okay, nice. Now that's super easy. You'll see that it had some uh, unintended side effects. One, it increased the contrast throughout the image to sort of a chunky uh, amount that I don't like. And two, it really you know, made the sky go kind of thermonuclear. So now I'm gonna show you another really easy technique you can use to target these curves adjustments to just the area that you want. You can see that the snow is quite bright and the areas that it put too much contrast in, namely the trees and the mountains, are quite dark. And um, their Photoshop has a really cool built-in way you can use that light and dark information to create a selection for a mask. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click on my curves adjustment. This is my bright curves adjustment. And this one I'm gonna rename to my color curves adjustment. So click on the layer mask for my bright curves adjustment. Then go up here to, uh, to image, apply image. What that does is it makes a black and white copy of the image and saves it as a mask. That's the mask for our bright curves adjustment. And if I turn that on and off, you can see how now all of a sudden it's only affecting the snow and the sky. It's not affecting the mountain or the trees at all. And that's because I told it not to through that apply image. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing for my color curves adjustment here. Instead of going image, apply image, I'm just gonna hold alt or option, click on my thumbnail mask and drag it up and it'll ask me if I wanna replace the layer mask, you just click yes. So now both my, my color and my brightness curves are only affecting 
the bright parts of the image, namely the snow and the sky. So if I don't want them to affect the sky, what can I do? Real simple, I'm just gonna select them both, hit Control or Command G to group them into a layer, add a layer mask on that, and then I'm actually just gonna take a black brush at a low opacity and just kind of mask out the sky a little bit like that. So now my adjustment is only affecting the snow. And well, you know, you can be a little more careful with your curves adjustment in the sky, but check that out. How cool is that? How much we really brought out the color separation and tonal values in the snow. Look in this area right here where these ridges are just getting caught by the sun. They go from standing out almost not at all to really just popping out. And you can see it throughout the image. These areas here, how much you bring out that color separation. and make those areas pop out. So that's it, that's the technique, super simple. You can use that anywhere you like. You could even do it up here in the sky, make another couple of curves adjustments, bring out the blue, maybe in the shadows and the reds and the highlights to make that cloud, bring out the texture and color a little bit more, make it a little bit pop. So as I mentioned earlier, this, is, this photo had already done some raw processing on it. I wanna show you what the original photo looked like. Okay, this is the photo straight out of camera as I took it that morning. And then this is the final photo that I edited completely uh, using those curves adjustments, using some vignette, a little bit of exposure blending, some uh, texture adjustments and contrast adjustments throughout it. So that's straight out of the camera. That's the final image. If you wanna see how I did that, how I took it from start to finish, including all the raw processing, those curves adjustments you just saw, exposure blending, all kinds of other neat techniques like dodging and burning, I have a full walkthrough on my website. You can just click right here on this icon. That'll take you right to the walkthrough and you can see exactly how I took that photo from start to finish. And if you like this video, I would be honored if you subscribe to my channel, share it with your friends, or you can also sign up for my newsletter to get lots more great Photoshop and photography tips just like this, as well as exclusive content like assignments that you can follow to improve your own photography and, uh, and have a good time. All right, thanks everybody for watching. I'll catch you next time. Until then, have fun and happy shooting.